Call all hands. Beat the quarters. Now, out the gun. Stand by this covered battery. One broadside into it, if you please, Captain Bush. Pointers on target. Lint stops ready. Aye, aye, sir. Ready. Fire. Michael Redgrave as C.S. Forrester's Indomitable Man of the Sea, Horatio Hornblower. I'd read of the blind hatred that was said to seize on fighting men in crises. But, well, I don't suppose I'd really quite believed in it. I was rather a mild young man, I think. Country bred, not long at sea. So it was something of a shock to me to find that I could have this feeling, too. At least on one occasion long ago. The story of this unexpected piece of self-discovery began quietly enough just off the coast of Spain, less than 100 miles from our own British port of Gibraltar. Uh, Mr. Ross, call up side boys and marine guard. All honors to a captain who's an ally. Very good, sir. Yes. And pass the word to Captain Pelou. He'll probably want to be at the gangway. Yes, that's long, sir. <laughs> the Spanish captain welcome to speak French. Ask you to come below for a glass of wine. Well, well Captain Pelieu, sir, I, I've only got school friends, sir. I know, I know, but I can only read the stuff. Some of it. Well, I'll try, sir. Um, uh, Monsieur le Capitaine, uh, voulez-vous descendre au cabin uh, de notre capitaine? Uh, il, il désire que vous buvez du, du vin. Hey, uh, Merci, non, monsieur. Je désire qu'il lise cette lettre. Ça maintenant. Immediately. Oh, merci. Um, he says, sir, he prefers you read the contents of this envelope at once, sir, without delay. Mm, very good. Well, now. Oh, oh, it's in French. Here, read it, Hornblower. Um, yes, sir. Well, um, uh, well, it's <laughs> most a compliment addressed by His Excellency mm. the Duke of. Bell Quite to the most gallant ship captain, Sir Edward Bellew, Knight of the Bath, and so on. Yes, and, yes, uh, yes, um, yes. Um, but, well, sir, the real nub of it seems to be that Spain is now neutral, oh. no longer at war with France, oh. and must enforce, that's it, yes, must enforce her rights. It says, sir, that we have been at anchor here 24 hours, what? and that if we... The Spaniards leaving us in the lurch? Doesn't he know we be his ally, a faithful friend? I it think so. Oh, go on. Yes, sir. Uh, six hours from now, sir, if we are still within range of the shore batteries, they will have orders to fire on us. The gall of it. I've a mind to. Hornblower. Sir? You tell this fellow. No, never mind. I must let him see he's made me angry. Mr. Hornblower. Sir? Tell Mr. Chad to see him over the side with all the honors. Side boys, boats and pipes. Drummond? Yes, sir. Yes. Everything we can muster. Then I'll go below and do my swearing. Tell Mr. Eccles I want to be underway within the hour. Yes, sir. Infernal impudence. It was 
about it. It was almost funny. I poured out complimentary farewells to the best of my ability. And while I was doing it, the two captains stiffly exchanged bows at every phrase, hats across stomachs and so on. But Captain Ballew was as good as his word, or even better. The cable was hove short in less than an hour, and, and as we slowly got underway, I stood in the waist with Mr. Wales, our carpenter, looking across at the distant white town, which would soon fade. Two long, sharp prows had emerged from the inner bay and were pointing towards the indefatigable. They were a sort of ship I'd never seen in my whole life, at least outside my history books at school. Hi, Mr. Wales, what are they? Galleys, Mr. Hornblower. Galleys? But like, like ancient Roman triremes, is that it? That's it. And manned by slaves. Trade out of the ancient world, and yet here, beside modern craft like ours. Oh, this is something to see, all right. How many does the Spanish have in commission, Mr. Wales? Couldn't help having you, Mr. Hornblower. A dozen, I should say. Four men to the oar and 50 oars. That means 200 galley slaves per ship. Oh, and now our last salute. I see we're giving it. They're replying in the port of Cadiz. Yes, a bit ironic, these cutters is salute. Hornblower, I'll wager the next time we hear those guns from shore, they'll be firing the real thing. Lieutenant Ross was quite right in that prophecy. The tide of war was turning against England. Nation after nation was retiring from the contest against the tyrant Bonaparte. And in the weeks that followed, it looked as if we would soon stand almost alone against the world. I do not like the look of it, Mr. Chad. Don't like it one little bit. The current is quite strong, sir. And what faint prevailing winds that are are blowing in the same direction. And our grain ship... Confound it all. I give my arm for two hours of a southerly wind just now. That's all we need to waft us up to the mole. Well, what is it, Mr. Hornblower? Sir, masthead lookout has just reported. Vessels approaching far off on the port beam. Lieutenant Ross asks for instructions, sir. Port beam, eh? Give me that glass, Mr. Chad. Yes, I... I think I can barely detect... Take the glass, Mr. Chad. Horizon's extremely hazy, but... Tell me if I've seen her right. Unless I'm very much mistaken, it's our friends from Cadiz. From Cadiz, sir? I don't quite follow. The galleys, man, the Spanish galleys. Look carefully now. Can't you make out the rise and fall of those damnable oars? Yes, sir, by heaven, that's exactly what they are. The galleys. And, sir, they're heading straight for us, or I'm a blind man. Quick now. I'll want you on the quarter deck, Mr. Chad. We'll arm the men, ready the longboat. Come. I'll call all hands the quarters immediately, sir. Apparently, the galley's intention was to fall upon the merchant ships lying farthest behind in the convoy. Three grain ships lay within half a mile of us and might be covered by our gunfire, but the others could expect no such protection. And a pair of galleys sped towards these, looking like ghosts, sinister ghosts of long dead cruelties and injustices. Are all folks assembled, Mr. Chen? Aye, sir. Mr. Soames will command the cutter. Mr. Mason, the longboat. I want six powder cutter and eight lowered into both boats. And grappling irons, of course. Yes, sir. They're already equipped. Mr. Hornblower, sir, you are to check all personal arms. Yes, but make sure each hand has pistol and cutlass as he goes over time. Oh, I, I, I thought perhaps the jolly boat was going too, sir. That's my special charge, oh, you know, sir. Your jolly boat attack one of those war galleys, Hornblower. A 12 foot nut show with a crew of six. Don't make me laugh. Well, I oh, sir. We could just pull to one of the grain convoy sir, and, and reinforce her crew against attack. Well, uh, hmm. yes, uh, possibly. Uh, Captain Pelusa, what do you think of the young man's proposal? 
He says he and his crew might be required by one of the convoy. Jackson, go bring our other men, girl. Be quick now. I I can. All right, all right, Mr. Hornblower. See about it, then. Make for any one of our ships that may need help. Now put I, your men aboard her. I but sir. don't waste any more time with talk of jolly boats in action. Yes, thank you, sir. Jackson, under her. All six of us is ready, Mr. Hornblower. Then we all here for the Davy Tinia. Good. Got pistols and cutlasses? Aye, sir. And um, swing out the jolly boat. You're aching to attack them demon ships here, sir. Oh, quiet. Well, we, we, we just might want to, Jackson, if, if the chance came. I, are you willing? And the others, too? Willing? I long to have a crack at them, Mr. Oak. So does all six of us. Good. Don't worry down about it, sir. Good, good. Then we'll, well, we'll see. myself, I'd never in my life felt the sudden, violent, personal hate that shook me now. The longboat and the cutter, both much larger than our little craft, had a good start on us and made fast headway. We lagged behind, and I found myself clutching the tiller and leaning forward in my eagerness to be at grip somehow with this weird enemy. Just look at them galleys or blades fly. The way they come sweeping down is something. The wife said they'd, uh, they'd hardly be time now to board a grain ship if you want to. I think you're right. I'm going to pull the tiller over. We'll follow the cutter, for better or for worse. Sir? Well, Hunter? I can see Mr. Stowers at the cutter. Give it orders, sir. She's pointing her six times at the galleys. She going to fire? I wonder. It's much too great a range for that six-pounder pop gun, I'm afraid. All the same, I'm glad to see she's ready. Is sir, she... sir, look there. What is it? There's the other galley, big as life, gliding right in between them two merchant ships. And our cutter's in her very path. Fall, man. Fall! We've got to get out there and help. Pull their lives, I tell you. Pull! We're gaining on the cutter, Mr. Hornblower. She's fired. The yes. cutter's fired. Yes. Straight at the galley's path. Well, it's done no good. It's just splinters, see? This don't look good for the cutter, sir. Those oars are quickening now, and the galley's... galley's coming down to ram her. It's, it's like the Greeks, that... that, that, that Salamis or somewhere. Phew, that was close. We just missed our own cutter, sir. And now we're past her. Shall we turn about and... She's going to ram the cutter. Why, the only they cleaved the cutter right in two. And Mr. Soames was standing up in the stern sheets when she struck. Yes. I can't even see him now. It was a chilling sight. One moment before, Lieutenant Soames looking straight at the death which cleaved towards him through the blue water. And now, no trace of him or half his men. A few men clung to the severed cutter's stern parts. But as the Spanish galley's starboard oars swept by us, just clearing us and our own oars, she rode them down relentlessly and passed over their bobbing heads. Give way, Port! Give way! Use your grapple, Jackson. Use it now. We're going aboard that devil ship. Jackson yelled an oath in reply and hurled our grappling hook on its long line. It caught in the flooded gilt rail of the galley's quarter just before she swept out of our reach. I was wild with rage and horror now. Somehow we must avenge that cutter's crew. Our own men had been slaughtered by this ghost out of the past. I already loathed her for her brutal slavery, but but the cutter's fate was the last straw. I can't hold her, sir. Do you feel that pull? Lines cutting my hands off. Take a turn around the cleat. Don't be a fool. We've got to hold on to her, Jackson. She's fast round the cleat. 
Oh, I swear it's like we'd harpooned a whale, ain't it, sir? Look, like this earth, they've seen us. There's a Spaniard running out on her poop. He's got a knife to cut our line. Well then, shoot him, Hunter. Good shot, Hunter! He fell right out of sight below the rail. Look, men, the odds are heavy against us, but we've a, a good chance to climb aboard. Are you for it? We're only seven. Aye, 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 aye. Good lads. All right, pull up them there. You, Davis, you, Carson, give Jackson a hand with the line. Haul us up in closer to our stern. They were as fighting mad as I. All of us shouting at each other, shaking with fury and excitement. Now, it was then that that word I'd read came back to me, flared in my mind like fire. Bloodthirstiness. Well, finally I knew what that word meant. I was insane with it. Then, four or five swarthy faces appeared above the galley's gilded stern, and muskets pointed down into the jolly boat. Our pistols, lads, and fire! Them Spanish heads went out of sight right quickly, sir. Carson's near conscious. Reload. Watch out, Mr. Hornblower. Someone's pushed a musket barrel through the window in that after cabin up there. You got a nice aim, sir. I'm heading for that broken cabin window in the stern. Now, bring the men after me, one at a time. Aye, aye, sir. I flung myself at the grapnel line. My legs grazed the water as the line sagged, but my arms finally carried me upwards. I swung up my feet, kicked out what remained of the shattered window, and hurled myself through. I came down on the cabin deck with a thud and peered about me in the dim cabin. The Spaniard who'd aimed through the window lay there dead. I was alone. Mm. Hot. You needn't jump, sir. It's only me. Are we all alone in here, sir? Don't talk so loud. Are the others coming, Jackson? Hunters next. They'll all be here, sir. Except Carson. Good oil. We can't wait for them now. But, sir, here's that commotion up above. Look, now, speed's the important thing, Jackson. Now, come along. Here's the cabin door. Find the officers first, Jackson. Got your cutlass ready? Aye, aye, sir. Good. Look. There's their two big guns up forward there, and three or four men on the forecastle. Yes, but there'll be more on the poop just above us. Look behind you. What? More Spaniards from the forecastle. They got their swords out, too. More Spaniards. Oh. What? It's Mr. Chad and some hands, sir. They're coming overside. Sorry that, by, well, by inadvertence, we didn't, well, we didn't follow instructions. You see, sir, it was... Oh, but uh, the Admiral will be pleased all the same, Mr. Hornblower. How's that, sir? And uh, <clears throat> now that we've lost poor Mr. Soames in that accident with the cutter, I rather think you shall need another watchkeeping officer. I have it in mind to give you an order as um, acting lieutenant, young man. Acting lieutenant, sir? But, uh, sir, I... I, I just lost my head, I think. I, I boarded the galley in a kind of fit of, oh, I don't know, insanity, perhaps. It might be well if more young officers lost their heads in that way, then. But, sir, I, I mean, I hardly... I, I wouldn't like to make, make false pretenses, sir. I, and now I'm honored for it. I'm, well, I, I'm almost ashamed of that blind rage now, sir. I, I must be honest, I am. Never question the lucky things that happened to you, Mr. Hornblower. Ah, you'll learn more moderation in good time, unfortunately. Well, uh, thank you, sir. Horatio Hornblower, starring Michael Redgrave, is based on the novels by C.S. Forrester. 
Music composed and conducted by Sidney Torch. Produced by Harry Allen Towers.